Hey, it's Mr. Veve, and this lesson is on the structure of DNA. So let's get right into it with our first key concept. DNA structure is the same in all organisms. So let's look at it a little bit more closely. So what is DNA? Well, it stands for deoxyribonucleic acid. You see the DNA there. And that is the genetic material for all organisms. Uh, it contains all the information that's needed to make proteins, and proteins are actually what determine uh, traits and characteristics of any given organism. Okay, so if the words nucleic acid look familiar to you from the biomolecules video, well then you should remember this. They contain carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, and phosphorus. That's nucleic acids, that biomolecule. The monomer of a nucleic acid is called a nucleotide. And then the polymer is just the same thing, nucleic acid. So a nucleotide, the monomer, has three different parts, and this is really important to understand. So you've got the pentagon down at the very bottom, the blue one, is a sugar, and then you have to the right of that a nitrogenous base, and then to the left of that you have a phosphate group. So you've got sugar, a nitrogen base, and a phosphate group. Those three parts, very important to remember. So let's look at the structure of the nitrogen bases, those things that are off to the right-hand side. So there are four nitrogen bases that we really need to understand. They are thymine, cytosine, adenine, guanine, and they are represented by the letters T, C, A, and G. Their particular structures are there for you, just so you can see, but you're not going to have to memorize those structures just yet. Okay. There is another nitrogenous base that is only in RNA, and that is called uracil, and that is U, but we're not going to talk about that in great detail in this video. So. If we look here, uh, A, T, C, and G, uh, each uh, one of these nucleotides likes to pair with another one. The A likes to pair with the T, and G likes to pair with C. So if you want to remember that, here's one way you can remember it is Austin, Texas is a great city, A, T, G, C. Those are the ones that go together. G does not want to pair with T, and C does not want to pair with A. That's just the way it works. So. If we're looking at complementary strands, meaning like I have a strand of DNA that has a certain number of bases, uh, and you look here, TAC, GG, AACT, uh, if I asked you what the complementary strand would look like, well, then you would write me out a strand that has the complementary bases for each one of those. So the complementary strand would look a lot like this. So if you look at the very first letter of the original strand, which was T, the complementary strand would have a in the first spot because T pairs with A. And you move down the line, A pairs with T, so the second one in the complementary strand would be T, and so on and so forth. So you get A T G C C T T G A. Okay, so that is how the base pairs work. So if you start with one strand and you're going to pair the um, different bases with it, you get the complementary strand that we see there in red. So all organisms have the same DNA structure, like we said. The only difference is the actual order of those nitrogen bases. So actually, uh, humans share a lot of the same um, DNA with a lot of different organisms. We actually share about 98% of our DNA with chimpanzees, 92% with uh, mice, uh, fruit flies, 44%, and even with um, a weed, uh, just a plant, a simple plant, we share about 18% of the same DNA. So think about the chimpanzee, 98% is shared, that 2% difference takes you from a chimpanzee to a human. So it's very, very important what those bases do and what order they're in, and thus what proteins they make. So the structure of DNA, there's uh, several scientists that helped discover this. You've got Rosalind Franklin, and you've got Watson and Crick. Um, so something that they used uh, to figure out what the exact structure of it looked like, they used uh, x-ray diffraction. Um, you can see a little picture of that in the center there. And they got this X-shaped looking thing uh, from their experiments. And really what that meant was that DNA formed a double helix. And if you see here, there's the first and second helix in red and blue. Um, and that forms kind of an outer portion of DNA. And then there's an inner portion that you see with the green lines there. So let's look at that a little more closely. That outer portion is made of a sugar phosphate backbone. Remember those three parts of the nucleotide? One is sugar and one is phosphate. Well, that is the backbone of DNA. So if you're looking, that's the, the helix part. Okay. So uh, the helix part, the sugar phosphate backbone, 
which on here is represented with the blue pentagons and circles, remember the sugar and the phosphate, those are connected to each other by covalent bonds. Okay, so the backbone is connected by covalent bonds. And then if we look at the inside, that's where the nitrogenous bases are. So the G, C's, A's, and T's uh, face the inside of the helix and they bond with each other using hydrogen bonds. Now, you notice in the picture to the right, uh, T and A have two bonds between them. G and C have three bonds between them. That's kind of something important to remember because the more G's and C's a strip of DNA has, uh, the stronger it is in bonding because three bonds to G and C and only two to A and T.